the ultimate RV power setup. You guys are gonna like this one. How many of you like to go boondocking in your RV and you've got a gas generator, but you don't necessarily wanna hear that all the time. So then you get a portable power station, but it dies too fast and you're trying to find a compact yet crazy powerful and capable system. I think I got a winner here for you. So the main player in this setup is some kind of uh, portable yet large power station. This is the Anchor F2000. Right over here, I've got another great candidate to the Blue Eddy Apex 300. Now the awesome thing about uh, this setup is we've got a very capable inverter. This one will do 2400 watts continuous with a really decent surge. In fact, uh, this starts a 15,000 BTU air conditioner so long as it can use its full inverter capacity. I have a testing video of that uh, that I'll leave a link down in the description, maybe even one up here in the top right corner so you can see that. But if you're trying to run, say, your RV air conditioner, uh, it's going to chew through the battery on this unit big time. And even adding the expansion battery to it will, yes, double what that has, uh, but uh, that's still only a total of four kilowatts. Something is better than nothing, for sure. Now will give you uh, a couple hours runtime with uh, the air conditioner, but not the whole day. So that's where a few of these additional mods that don't cost very much could really, really give you some impressive power and performance and allow you to continue to use your same power station, your same gas generator, all of that stuff. So let me just show you how this all interacts and uh, works together. So first and most importantly, give serious consideration to getting a golf cart lithium iron phosphate battery. And just because it has the word golf cart in it doesn't mean it's only good for that. In fact, the, I think these are perfect for RVs if you want a ton of power in a small package that is built and designed to withstand a high vibration environment. The other nice thing, especially about this particular one, is, is that you've got a really long communication cord that you can route into your rig and it gives you easy control of the battery itself from a remote location. I'm gonna show you this here in just a second. But this battery alone is 51.2 volts at 105 amp hours, rated for 5,376 watt hours. Now you run a capacity test on this and spoiler alert, it crushes it. So that battery right there that uh, actually has a smaller footprint than this power station itself has more capacity in it than the battery in that power station and its expansion battery. So that battery alone more than doubles the entire setup of this power station and its expansion battery. Crazy. So then all you do is uh, get a fuse or two and uh, you wire up three things. The first one being a cable like this. Now in an RV you may want one slightly longer. I'll leave a link uh, to uh, where I got this and uh, different lengths. But uh, this is a heavy duty 10 gauge cable and if I unplug it you can see that it has an XT60i connector and uh, it easily plugs into the DC input on this power station. This hack works for any power station that's rated up to 60 volts at least of input because this battery when fully charged can be up in the neighborhood of 58 volts for a short period of time uh, but it can get there so we need to be sure and not over volt the input of this power station you just simply connect your battery to the input right here and you're good to go now if you have a power station like this with just a single dc input you've obviously just occupied the spot where you could hook up some solar. Well, I got uh, happy news for you. You can actually now hook up way more solar using this uh, battery than you could just going straight into this power station. And that's because we have a larger buffer now of space for excess solar to go into. So this power station maxes out at a thousand watts of solar input. Well, if you just have the power station and its expansion battery, it will take four hours of perfect sunlight plus no power consumption out of this to fully recharge. Most RV people don't have that luxury. So if you just get yourself one of these awesome MPPT solar charge controllers, it's no longer branded to uh, this particular brand, but uh, the manufacturer still makes this same charge controller just under a different brand that I'll leave a link to down in the description. But I love this charge controller because not only is it smart with a Bluetooth app so you can monitor and change parameters from your phone, no internet required, but it's also compatible with every battery voltage under the sun, 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt. So you can use it to charge a 48 volt battery like we're showing here. You could use it to recharge your 12 volt house batteries if you needed to. Uh, it's very, very flexible, which I really like. It's compatible with lithium, 
which we're doing today. If you need to top off, say, your uh, starter battery, it died, you need to charge it up. This uh, also has a lead acid mode. It's just very, very versatile for a variety of different things. And one of these can accept up to 150 volts of DC input. So you can actually hook more solar panels in series to this than you could to this. And this is a 40 amp MPPT solar charge controller, whereas this is only a 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller. So if you were to max the charge controller out with over 2000 watts of solar, now you could dump in the equivalent of the entire power station's worth and its extra battery in just two hours as opposed to four. So I think that's really valuable because you could produce enough power from the solar to not only provide power to the load that uh, the power station is providing, which would be your RV, but it would also provide enough that it would recharge the batteries at the same time. But wait, it gets better. Connected to this uh, big golf cart battery is another cable, and it's coming around over here, and it's plugging into a 48 volt high power lithium battery charger. Now, this particular charger is an 18 amp model. These things are dirt cheap online. I'll leave a link for this one or something like unto it down in the description. But this makes it super, super easy to just plug into an existing gas generator and it can be a small one. It doesn't have to be big, which is awesome. You know, Honda EU 2200i, this one's uh, the Max Peating Rods uh, 4000 watt model. This one's pretty sweet. I've got a detailed video coming out on this soon. And you don't just have to do one. If you wanted to just start out with an 18 amp charger, that puts in about a thousand watts of power from the generator to the battery. You could get a second one as well and do 2000 watts in to there. If you really wanted to go big or go home, you could do like this EG4 charge verter and it would dump just a massive amount of power into that uh, battery. Point is you can customize it however you'd like to get some power from the generator into the battery and as a result, the power station. Now certainly you could just plug the power station directly into that, but it will not charge that battery up at the same time. There's also an issue with plugging the power station into the generator directly, and that's what happens when it goes into pass-through charging mode, and you actually get a D-rate on the power output of the power station, which I made a whole video about. I'll leave a link for up in the top right corner as well as down in the description. But it just gives you a ton of flexibility, and like I said, it's a very small footprint. Most of you are already carrying a portable power station as well as a gas generator. So to just eke in just one of these batteries and a little charge controller, an AC charger of some kind is pretty easy. You probably already have some solar, maybe you've been wanting to expand, but the power station's been the limiting factor. Well, this solves all of it at a very good cost. So let me just show you kind of how this works. It's very, very cool. So even though this battery is uh, cheap, it's really, really nice. I've got a whole teardown uh, portion coming up here in the video. So you can see inside and see how nice it is. But one of the things I love is this remote control uh, screen, so you can monitor the battery, as well as a remote on-off switch. This is a game changer right here. So this could be in a you know storage bay or something. Heck, the power station could be in a storage bay somewhere too. And you could just route these wires and this screen to the interior of the RV, because then you have monitoring on your phone, generally, for one of these power stations. And then, you know, let's say it's starting to get low or whatever, you're trying to dump some power in from the battery. It's as easy as coming over here and hitting the on off switch. The battery's going to turn on. You can see the light lit up and it actually turns the power on at the terminals. Without that switch turned on, there's no power at these terminals, which makes it much safer, you know, when you're bouncing along down the road or whatever. And this screen just gives you all the important information, your battery voltage, your state of charge, and then it also tells you your temperature and the kind of amperage that uh, is getting pulled out of the uh, battery. And so now with that all on, if you look, the power station is now uh, inputting over a thousand watts of power into it. If I connect up my solar, I'll have simultaneous solar charging going into this battery and any, you know, up to a thousand watts of that power will just be going straight into the power station here until it gets fully charged and uh, the loads are less than a thousand watts. And then it will automatically shut itself off, allowing the battery to charge up fully. And eventually, you know, the charge controller will shut things down too once everything gets fully charged. I'm in my garage uh, today, so I'm not going to fire up the gas generator, but I brought over a fake gas generator. <laughs> I'll show you how you can simultaneously 
charge from a gas generator and still input power into the power station as well as charge the battery. So we'll go ahead and start the generator up. <laughs> Old charger has uh, turned on. And if you take a look at the power station, it's uh, pulling just over a thousand watts of energy. And so we've got a thousand, a little over a thousand watts uh, going into the power station. And if we look at the battery monitor, we can see that now we're only pulling 1.3 amps out of this battery. So actually at the moment with the size of uh, charger we've got here, the power station is basically just immediately taking the power from that and dumping it in here. In fact, it's still pulling a little bit from the battery, but uh, not very much. So then if you added uh, some solar into the mix, you know, you could easily be going net positive into the battery while still charging this at full speed. And then the other nice thing about uh, just doing a charger to the battery and not doing pass-through charging at all is because you'd be able to dial in how much power you pull from your generator really well, whether that's just two of these chargers together, so that you're only pulling like 2000 watts, that would literally be perfect for this size generator. That will be cheaper to buy than a big, you know, charge inverter like this that uh, is customizable and adjustable in uh, how much power it pulls from the generator, but you might like that flexibility, or maybe you want to be able to pull, you know, 240 volts uh, from a big 240 volt generator options are out there. I'll leave a link to not only the charge verter down below, but also these uh, small uh, inexpensive 120 volt chargers. But dialing it in for your generator so that you are just pulling a very constant continuous load will make the generator very, very happy. The thing that's rough on generators is, are the surges, right? So the generators run in and then all of a sudden the air conditioner wants to turn on and it just gut punches it really let the battery and the inverter take care of all of that and just put a, that constant charge load into that battery on your generator and it will run much happier and much more efficiently. Well, let's say uh, you're you're done, uh, you're gonna travel to a new spot, you're done camping, it's as easy as just coming into your uh, command center, turning the battery off, it shuts down and you can see no more input goes into the power station. These terminals become dead on the outside of the battery so it turns into a very safe situation and that's all controlled remotely here. And let me brag this battery up a little bit and show you some specifics about it because this isn't your you know, average battery. This thing is really, really nice. 5,376 watt hours. 250 amp BMS. This one's not joking around. There is a switch on the battery itself too. We've got a little vent right here. Here's the communication port that that wiring harness plugs into. And look at these really nice terminal covers. Shipped with a huge amount of terminal screws, which is awesome. Maybe some of them uh, would potentially be used to secure the battery through these mounting points. On the little display here, you can see that it has been charged up to 100%. And then over here on this side of the battery, I've got the Victron Smart Shunt hooked up, and that's going to be what measures the amount of power we draw from this. You can see that uh, everything has been zeroed out on the app. Okay, we've got uh, the yellow light of death on the 12,000 XP, and we've got an alarm going off on this Battery monitor says 0% state of charge, 43.4 volts. That's definitely pretty darn dead. <laughs> but uh, check out the results here from the smart shunt. 108 amp hours, 5.6 kilowatt hours. Great job, watt cycle. Your battery crushed the capacity test. Let's take a look inside this battery. And here we go. Look how nice this is, you guys. Watt cycles outdoing themselves. So every laser welded uh, connecting bus bar has a little hump in it that uh, allows the expansion and contraction. Notice the super nice uh, cable management. And then look at this, they're using these super cool flexible bus bars. And uh, that even has a little relief hump in it. And then notice the main positive is also one of those flexible bus bars, which is fantastic. We've got that huge hunk of metal coming right to your terminal. So I took a flashlight and uh, shine it down here. It's a little hard to see, but I think I can see a six and an A. So I think it's actually three uh, conductors. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but this one here splits into two and then this one's just one, but it looks like it's three six gauge wires. They're connecting from the main negative right here and uh, going to the main negative on the BMS. But then coming off the BMS, is this uh, flexible bus bar as well feeding to the main negative. And then the cells themselves 
have these uh, what appear to be aluminum compression plates. And it's hard to see, but that black thing right there is a rubber wrapped strap, metal strap. You might be able to see the very edge of it over here, but uh, there are two of those metal straps pulling and compressing the cells. Everything has been torqued and marked. This is like rock hard, like a glue almost. So not only is it serving as a mark for the torque, but it's also serving to hold all the connections in place because this is designed to go in a high vibration environment. And then of course, take note of the uh, very mega seal around the top here. That's what gives this battery uh, such good water resistance ratings. And then we've got a zillion uh, temperature sensor. So we've actually got one on the positive terminal, which is kind of interesting, as well as one on the main negative terminal. That's actually kind of cool because if your connection is heating up on the outside here, it will transfer some of that heat into here and it uh, could potentially uh, trip uh, over temperature, which would be awesome. And then we've got a temperature sensor here on top of the battery pack. We've got another temperature sensor over here on the battery pack. We've got another one over here on the main uh, positive, and then we've got yet even another one over here on the main negative. So there is a gazillion different temperature sensors in this battery pack, which is awesome. So far, I'd say this is the best quality build golf cart battery that uh, I've tested uh, so far. So this is my idea for the ultimate RV power solution. But sound off in the comments on what you guys think of this, if you think it's pretty legit, or if you have other ideas and configs that uh, you've used, uh, it's always fun to hear and uh, we all appreciate you sharing your wisdom and knowledge. I've always got uh, more great content on the horizon for you. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hype. The five free things that just make a tremendous difference to the channel. There's some of you out there that uh, do that for me on a frequent basis, and I want to tell you a huge, huge thank you, and uh, I hope to earn the luxury of many more of you doing that uh, for me. That's what the YouTube algorithm needs to get to videos like this in front of more eyeballs. And as you can tell, this is not your general run-of-the-mill type video. I, I really try to bring value and uh, good education to the videos I produce. So please consider doing those five things for me. Links to everything are down in the description. Check out the other videos I've linked as well so you guys can see how those aspects play into the mix of all this. Stay safe, and we'll catch you all next time.